Hey guys, Alex here, and today we're going to be taking a look at micro thread milling. That is machining 440 and 256 threads on the Tormach 1100M. And not only did I have to dig up the smallest thread mills we have in the shop, but I had to find the smallest screws we have laying around. Now we know our thread milling calculator works for the larger screw threads, like one half 13 through quarter 20, and even a little bit smaller than that, but we've never tested it on screws this small. So I'm curious to see how the equations we have in the calculator now hold up for screw sizes that are even smaller than the sizes we've tested on. Hopefully you guys enjoy, let's jump right in. So the first thing we're gonna want to do is create our thread mills. The issue with this being that I really don't like Fusion's tool library thread mills. So the reason for this is if we go to create a thread mill, you can see if we select a single tooth thread mill, there's actually nowhere in here to set our neck diameter. So the reason this is a problem is that often in Fusion, it shows a thicker neck diameter than your tool may actually have because it's calculated automatically. This becomes an issue when you try and simulate your thread milling operation because you may get false collisions that wouldn't really happen in real life. So one way around this is I have a tool check built in that both checks that the tool isn't too large for the tap drill size and it will not collide with the walls of your thread. So that being said, I really like to create thread mills using a form tool instead of as a thread mill infusions tool library. This is because it lets me know exactly what the tool is gonna do in the simulation without having to double check myself. What I've done is created a thread mill form tool template, which will be available along with any other files you see in this video on the NYC CNC website. So the way to use this is to go into the design tab and then you can go ahead and find your parameters. And you see in here, I have built in all of the parameters for our tool. So you can just change these yourself to match the tool you actually have. That will change your sketch size here. And then once you're ready, you go into the manufacturer workspace, S for search, and I just like to search form mill. And then what it's gonna have us do is select the tool profile, the tool axis, which is the center line of your tool. And we wanna make sure that this arrow is facing down, which would be towards the machine table. And our compensation point, you're gonna see our major diameter of the thread mill is actually modeled to this line here with our crest, which we talk a lot about in our first couple thread milling videos, so be sure to check those out. But our compensation point is actually gonna be the tip of the tool, and then we compensate for this crest in our thread milling calculations. Press OK. And then there's no pop-up or anything, which I don't love, but if you check your tool library, it will have just created that as a form mill, and then you can go in there and you can change some other settings such as the diameter, your overall length, your flute length, stuff like that, just so you can make sure your simulation is gonna be exactly what you see when you go to make the cut on the machine. Now I've got my form tools created and in the Fusion tool library. So we can see I'm gonna be using a scientific cutting tools number four thread mill and a 1.4 millimeter Datron 6419 thread mill. Once our tools are good to go, we can jump over to the thread mill calculator and we can get our PDO values and start setting up cam in Fusion. We have to input the major diameter of our hole, which we can look up in the machinery's handbook. And for the minimum and maximum minor diameter, I'm just inputting the tap drill diameter twice. Now we'll look back at the Datron thread mill info. We need to convert millimeters to inches here, but one important thing to keep in mind is you can also use the thread milling calculator for metric threads. Instead of putting all of your values in as inches, you would just put them all in as millimeters. So here we've got our thread mill cutting diameter and our flat length or our crest, which is often about one hundredth of the tool diameter. Uh, I put this under a microscope and it's so small that I was actually unable to tell if there was a crest. It is fairly sharp, so about a half a thou seems accurate for our crest length. Finally, we'll input the neck diameter here. And once our neck diameter of the thread mill is input, we wanna double check our tool checkbox and make sure that we are good to go. And then finally, once we know that our tool is good, we can look at our pitch diameter offset, which will be the value that we need to carry into Fusion. I went ahead and modeled our stock and got the drilling operation set up. So we are using a number 50 drill and a number 43 drill for the 256 and 440 threads respectively. And those are just standard tap drill sizes. To create our thread milling toolpath, we wanna to go up here to 2D, select thread, 
then jump over to our tool and we can select our Datron thread mill for the 256 thread. Click OK and then we're only going to go about a quarter inch deep. The important tab here is the passes tab. So this is a right hand thread. Our thread pitch is one divided by 56 because this is a 256 thread. So that second number after the dash is your TPI. Our pitch diameter offset, we're gonna grab, that is the value we just calculated in the thread milling calculator. And for this, it is 0 0.0182. We're also going to check multiple passes. We are gonna do three step overs at four thou per step over. The very last thing we're gonna do on this tab is check repeat passes. What this does is takes a spring pass and just follows your very last tool path one more time. This is gonna make sure your thread is cut a little bit more accurately, especially with your smaller thread mills. They like to deflect a little bit more in the cut. So the spring pass can really help the thread fit sometimes. This is okay in softer materials like aluminum, but you may not want to take a spring pass in materials that could work harden or cause your tools to wear out a lot faster. In this case, I'm okay with it and I think we'll be just fine but just something to keep in mind. Moving on to the linking tab, there's one last thing we want to be sure we check, especially when our minor diameter is close to the same diameter as our tool diameter, and then just lead to center. If you don't check this, sometimes you can plunge your tool right into the sides of the thread instead of along the center line of the hole, and this will without a doubt break your tool. So unless you're milling a larger thread with a smaller thread mill, I always check this when I'm thread milling just to be 100% sure that I'm not gonna crash the machine. We're gonna select our hole here. So one last thing I like to do after I create a toolpath is go to simulate. Go ahead and set the toolpath to tail and turn the stock on to make sure that mode is set to standard instead of fast. The fast has a lot less detail to it and it won't actually tell you if the thread mill is cutting, which is what we're looking for. So once we're set to standard, I just like to go and make sure that my very first pass is actually cutting the thread. If you have too many passes and too small a step over, sometimes your first pass doesn't actually make contact. So I like to check that every single time. And you can see my first pass there just gives a little bit of a cut into the part. So we should be good to go. Once again, we'll need to take a look at the thread milling calculator and set up our 440 thread PDO. So we can grab all of the values in box number one from the machinery's handbook. And once again, the minor diameter is just our tap drill size. The information in box two is all gonna come from our thread mill manufacturer aside from the flat length. If you're interested in this again, be sure to check out our original thread milling video, which really delves into the theory behind this and how we came up with this calculator. As a general rule, it's about one one hundredth of your tool's cutting diameter, and you can adjust this up and down to get the desired thread fit if you aren't close enough. Now that we have those values put in, we have our pitch diameter offset and our tool check is also good. So then we can take that, move into fusion and generate our tool path. Now that we know 256 is good, we can jump over to the 440 thread and I actually just duplicated the original operation by pressing control D. We'll go ahead and select our hole and then jump back over to the passes tab. We need to take a look at our thread milling calculator and grab our new pitch diameter offset for the 440 thread. Again, we're gonna do multiple passes. We'll keep it at three passes this time, but we're gonna change our step over to 5,000. And again, repeat passes, make sure lead to center is checked. And one last time, we're gonna simulate, make sure that our step over is okay and we aren't doing more passes than we need to. As you can see, our tool is making contact on the first pass and actually making a cut. We aren't cutting air at any point in this tool path, so we should be good to go. All of our toolpaths should be ready to run on the machine. So we'll move over to the Tormach 1100M. I've got a piece of stock set up in one of our Gen 1 Saunders Machine Works mod vices, and we are going to indicate this stock in and then get machining. You can see I'm only touching off on one spot here. That's because the only critical location is our Z height. So I'm going to touch that in, and then I'm just gonna zero X and Y where my indicator is. So I'm not indicating the whole piece of stock in just because it's not necessary, just to save a little bit of time. Next up, just using a 90 degree chamfer mill to do a quick spot on those two holes. 
Next up is a number 50 drill, and that is the tap drill size for our 256 thread. If you're interested in any of these speeds and feeds, or just in general, a more detailed summary of these cuts, be sure to check them out in Proven Cut, and you can see their cut numbers right here. Coming in with a number 43 drill, and that is the tap drill size for our 440 threads. Because this is such a small tool, I do want to check run out before we make this cut. So what I did is I programmed an option stop in Fusion, and then I'm going to go ahead and mount this tenths indicator to the spindle. What I'm doing here is I am just gently tapping our tool with a screwdriver, and that's going to slightly shift that ER call it and we can dial in the runout this way because we can actually tap the tool into place and then the ER call it will hold it. Card here to our video where we actually tested this method to make sure that it holds all the way through the cut and compared using this method to a tool with bad runout. I got our runout within a tenth or one ten thousandth of an inch, which is pretty good and definitely better than where it started. So now we can go ahead and start the program back up again and run this first thread mill up. You see I briefly pause here with the coolant off and that's just to make sure that our thread mill is above the hole and we aren't going to crash because these are very small tools, I didn't want to break them, and they can be rather expensive. And just checking to make sure I didn't break the tool, it is still there. Once again, we need to check the runout on our second tool and tap that into place. I got that between one and two tenths of runout, so that one was pretty good as well. And then we can run our next thread. Once again, pausing to make sure we're over the center of the hole, and then we'll turn our coolant back on and press cycle start once again. Now for the most important part, did our threads that we cut actually work? So I've got a 256 and a 440 screw here, and we're going to try them both in each thread and see if they fit. And just like that, they both fit perfectly. This makes me really happy and really speaks volumes of the thread milling calculator because this is the first time that I ran this program. I didn't have to fiddle with any of the values. I didn't have to change my crest up or down. It just works. So I'm really happy with the results, especially with threads this small which means our thread milling calculator works consistently and reliably. I think it's really, really helpful, and we put in a lot of work towards it to make it work for you. So we'll have links in the description to all of our NYC CNC content, as well as the thread milling calculator and some cam samples for you if you're interested in getting started in thread milling. I hope you guys learned something, hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you next week.